Want to get your game on? Well, viewers, we've granted your wish. Games, games, and more games. Turn to Tech TV for the best in gaming, gadgets, and fun. X-Play, weeknights at 1110 Central, only on Tech TV. We're spoiled today. When I was younger, I watched any now forgotten TV show that talked about video games. It didn't matter if it was a review show like Game Head or a sketch show that involved kicking people in the nuts in exchange for free video games. Oh, oh, oh wow. Here, I'm gonna lay this right here. <laughs> Let's see that in slow-mo. <laughs> that was a real show. Niche programs like these were lucky to go beyond season one. Gaming on TV just never lasted very long. But now... Anyone online with a snowball mic, a shelf of collectibles behind them, five Funko Pops, and an oversaturated frame can make a show talk about video games much faster than what TV can produce. There's so much out there, discussions, reviews, glitches, music remixes, fan animations, frickin' cable setup comparisons, who the fuck cares about this? I do! I'm a video editor! You're damn right I know the difference between scarred cables and component! You ever see a Super Nintendo run through a Framemeister? Holy shit! There's so much more out there that I could ever need. It's incredible. But to me, it's like anime. Sure, anime and gaming shows are all online when I want it, but I miss the feel of a full TV show production with bumpers. Sadly, TV can't compete with the speed and variety of the internet. I'm back. Gaming on TV never blossomed. Thus, why should TV stations today bother? The internet won. But during the summer of 2017, Disney XD came out of nowhere with DXP. Loading complete. Disney XD is now DXP. From 9 until 3, you're watching DXP. General audience programming for gamers of all ages. A new late night block all about gaming. Color me intrigued and have me drink from the segregated fountain. Could DXP be this generation's G4? No. What kind of content does DXP have to offer that the internet can't? Let's find out. First is IGN The Show. It's all the same reviews, news, and top tens already available on YouTube, edited together in a TV show format. Now I can watch an IGN video without having to read the comments section full of YouTubers throwing a hissy fit that a game got an 8 out of 10 instead of a 9 out of 10 while blaming their erectile dysfunction on Call of Duty and coming up with conspiracy theories on why people didn't like Batman v Superman. People, I know you're paranoid and that Sonic Unleashed review was a joke among others, but sometimes you gotta accept there does exist people who like things you don't like. When I was 14, I enjoyed the 2000s Fantastic Four movies and hated Batman Begins. Keep in mind, I was 14. The difference is between you and me is I didn't come up with conspiracy theories to justify it. Anyway, I don't really care for IGN, but having a gaming-based magazine show on TV is kind of nostalgic. But there's a huge problem with it that I'll talk about after our next DXP show. The Attack. We're your family now. The Attack is a legal-friendly successor to G4's Attack of the Show in the same way Mighty Number no. 9 is to Mega Man. If you remember, Attack of the Show used to be an hour-long TV series on G4 discussing funny internet videos, new tech products, skits, pop culture news, interviews, stuff like that. Whereas Disney's The Attack is cut down to 30 minutes and it's mostly just funny internet videos and maybe a skit or doing something dumb like making the biggest fidget spinner ever. Gone are the old hosts and instead of Kevin Pereira, we get Alex Correra. Pereira? Correra? The show is hosted by someone who already sounds like a bootleg of the previous host. But I kind of like the late night feel of The Attack. They have a real sarcastic vibe as if they secretly hate everyone. Yeah! You know what these are. Whoa, that looks so Probably cool. Probably because you're part of the problem and you're using one. Yeah. Ding dong. And we're not mad at you or the toy per se. We're mostly mad at people who make YouTube videos about them because they're all terrible. I looked into it and the attacks started as an online streaming show with much more inappropriate humor. If they can make it, so can I. I don't know what Kevin usually says because I'm so fucking high during the show usually. I take my eight balls, I my screw balls. Do, yeah. I can do heroin and then I'd go and I'd just be like, you and me. <laughs> Dude, just put the mic near a crotch. But the big problem with IGN, the show, and the attack besides being IGN is they're on Disney XD. You know, 
For kids, they can't really show off much in the way of mature-rated games, but they try anyway. That's valiant, but it's too bad the censors ruin whatever I'm supposed to be laughing at, like when they show off funny gaming moments on the attack. What was I supposed to laugh at? This happens so often. DXP has some weird standards. Guns are fine, but only when they're being fired do they have to censor them. And then there was that time I watched Disney broadcast this video about the amount of kills gamers have done with each gun in player unknown battlegrounds. Had I just tuned in not knowing they were talking about a video game, this footage would look a little weird to be played on Disney XD of all places. But for IGN the show and the attack, you're better off just watching the online equivalent of these shows, but let's talk Talk about the others. Welcome to Parker Plays. Hey, did we get it? Disney decided to give some random Let's Player his own TV show, Parker Plays. Nothing special, just another Let's Player making PG-rated jokes about games every Let's Player on YouTube already covered. The defining feature is that this has a little more production value for segments, and at least it's edited down for TV. Ah, this is Planet Coaster. How to play Planet Coaster. Build a park, attract customers, keep them happy and safe, try not to crash the roller coasters. So let's hop right in there, shall we? Still, single-person Let's Plays just aren't for me unless the player is having a mental breakdown. Related, I got into some trouble recently. If anyone saw my Neopets Let's Play with my ex, skip to nine minutes in where the controversy started. What happened was, out of our control, there is nothing we can do now. Please stop messaging us about it. We already filed the police report. No one was at fault here. The cops already know this, so stop messaging us. But now... Next show. Hey guys, I'm Strawberry17. Hey guys, it's Jimmy Wong. I'm on a brand new show called Polaris Primetime. What's the show, you ask? It's a bunch of YouTubers with celebrities playing some video games. And then there's Polaris Primetime, where it's YouTubers I have never heard of and maybe a TV star hanging out in their clubhouse. It's one big party let's play show while everyone is screaming for attention while playing games. It's Polaris Primetime! Featuring that guy from video game high school and guitar hero hero, Jimmy Wall, Strawberry 17, Woozy, Joey Graceffa. You know him from Blackish, and now you know he's a gamer. It's Marcus Grifter. I tell you, every year I recognize fewer and fewer names. Lombard Montague, Grace McLady, Andy Colorado, the Mondo Twins. Stuff. It's full of names I have never heard of. The only one I do recognize is the YouTuber Swoozy, and that's it. Who are these people? Hey, wait. What does this hoodie say? Oh, okay. I love this game. They mostly compete in multiplayer games like Mario Kart, which could be fun, but the problem is I don't know who any of them are, and I don't care who wins. Whee! All right, all right, all right. Game time, baby girl. I'm like a good little Changing the camera to different racers doesn't matter because I'm not keeping track of who's who. Meanwhile, their commentary is nothing but everybody screaming or egging each other on. <laughs> In general, I don't care about Let's Plays, but the few I do watch are group Let's Plays, like The Continue Show, partially because I like their commentary and it's edited down to the best parts. It's sort of like a podcast where people just BS about whatever topic. If they're playing a competitive game, I don't care who wins. What was that truck oh, show? Four Pacific Rim truck or show? No, the two guys and they have a Cadillac. Gah, 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 gah. On top of the big monster. Are you thinking? Uh, are you thinking? Big giant robot. Are you thinking of Mega Diner Strives and Dives, but you think that there's two guys on there because it's just one guy. Mega XLR. That's the name don't. of the cable we use. <laughs> I, I vaguely remember that. Yeah, it was like two dudes and they were just like, we just like drive around our Cadillacs. <laughs> what? And then she makes them, yeah, she does like a whole thing where she gives them like a giant robot. We should do a show where Nick just does synopsis of shows. <laughs> it's like there's like these two dudes and this girl comes out from space. And they're just like, I want to drive around in my car. Much of Polaris plays relies on the audience cheering for hopefully a YouTuber they recognize. They treat it like a competition rather than a podcast. I'd watch Polaris plays if they toned it down and were in more casual conversation conversation with each other, but no, everyone keeps screaming. Oh, 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 oh. 
The only redeemable quality for this show is the demonstration on what VR can do, and that's it. Polaris plays feel so fake. Fake enthusiasm all around, like when you're depressed and you try hard to laugh at something that wasn't all that funny. You want a distraction, yet nothing works. I think the worst moment is when they had this overblown Guitar Hero montage to music by Dragon Force, and they intercut with overreactions from YouTubers with their low-res iPhones. Yet everyone is fucking losing their minds. What I'm showing you really aired on TV. I did not edit this. God fucking damn lady, go to church! It's Guitar Hero, chill! The same elite beat agents, this shit looks like all those kids in Jesus camp. Alright, now I want everyone to raise your hands and we're gonna pray in tongues. Hallelujah, let's do it. Oh, we love you, Jesus. So, koho rashada kamala. In the name of Jesus, let's go. I mostly lean towards Catholic or Truman Show beliefs, so I'm sure Jesus will forgive me for editing that. We'll be back after these messages. You're not rock stars. It's just a stupid plastic controller. You saw Polaris Plays, now here's Polaris Player Select. It's 30 minutes of random snippets from Let's Plays already on YouTube. At least Parker Plays has original content and production value. This is just a best of clip show, except now it's censored. Well, why do we even play this game if you're able to do it without me? Hey, it's inexpensive to produce, so it'll likely be financially viable in ratings. Maybe next time Disney should just play 30 minutes of epic Vine compilations. Brawlhalla is a platformer slugfest, where the objective is for the players to destroy their enemies with an assortment of weapons and knock them off stage. Sounds like a testosterone-fueled uh, music festival. Okay! The next DXP show I want to talk about is Play With Caution. It's the only one on the list that I don't even remember airing. I just found a full episode on the official DXP YouTube channel. It's a game show that challenges people to play mostly crummy app games while the opposing team distracts them in one of many ways. Whether it be hitting them with bow and arrows or getting tasered. Now we can find out who has a heart condition. Prepare to focus while shock straps are placed on your arms and neck and your opponents shock you off your concentration. Oh, is, it, oh, oh, oh. is it working? Is it? It's are working. You, are you okay, it's working. Oh. Are you feeling, is stop, it stop, shocking? Stop. Is it, oh. It's a fun idea for a show until you feel how empty it is. What kind of cheap ass set is this? It looks like it was shot in Kevin Spacey's basement. You can hear from the echoes that there isn't even a studio audience. For all we know, this could have been shot in a doomsday shelter with people who've been there since Y2K. Hey, on my left, we have the red team. Let's hear it for the red team. <laughs> now on my right, we have the blue team. Let's hear it for the blue team. Two of the most popular primary colors on the planet. There's crap in the corner like a wooden block that has no reason being there. And look at that. They just have a fucking store-bought GoPro camera on the ground. This made it onto TV? It's on the level of the Nostalgia Critics online game show, Pop Quiz Hotshot. It's it says here, Ed, you have two other friends named Ed. Tell me about them. <laughs> 
Oh, yeah, there is Double D. He is very smart and he wears a sock on his head. <laughs> oh, and then there is Eddie. At least with that, the contestants are shitposting while this... This is just bland. Ignoring some quick on-screen text, you don't even know who these contestants are. I'm just supposed to root for my favorite color. You would assume this is just episode one, the test run pilot before they get more funding, but no. This is episode four. Disney, the mega corporation, gave them no money. They attempt to spice it up with some flashy, meme-tastic editing, but it can only do so much. So, what's the prize for getting tasered while playing shitty games? A generic medal. And the losers get cold water dumped on them. These probably aren't even contestants. I bet they're just interns hoping the show gets popular, but think again. Play With Caution only lasted four episodes. It is the saddest game show I've ever seen that made it onto TV. Was this a tax scam? And seriously, Crossy Roads? Buy a real fucking game. But to be real, this show has potential. It just needs more presence. And that's Confetti. My name's Mike Rylander. Thanks for watching Play With Caution. And we'll see you next week when we play another game. I started competing when I was 13 years old. Eventually, I went to NEC and at the very end of 2011, ever since then, I've been competing. Oh, hey, here's something with effort. Waypoint Presents, a documentary series interviewing different kinds of gamers. Topics like a disabled man who speedruns games with one hand, an MMA fighter with a love for cosplay, or a hobbyist trying to preserve video game history. We need access to more than just playing the game. We need to know how the company sold the game. We need to know, you know, what were the influences for the game? So what we do is identify this material, try to find it so that we can tell the story of these classic works of history, these video games. Now, this is the kind of stuff I want to see on TV, but I could understand if kids may be bored by it. From my experience, me as a kid was always fascinated by the documentary type shows Cartoon Network used to play like Toon Heads. I'm sure there's kids who want to learn about video games outside the Let's Play scene. Waypoint Presents is the best show DXP's got, even if it might not be all that hip with the kids. And here's not only the final show, but the worst show on Disney XP, eSports. I don't even watch normal sports. Why would I want this? Everyone is going to be vying for their spot in the Overwatch contenders. Not only Europe, but also the best from North America. This is the Overwatch contenders. Time to attack. That's cool if you're into that. I'm not homophobic or anything, but this just isn't for me. So take what I say lightly. You got esports for the likes of Smash Bros, Street Fighter, and Overwatch. If you remember all that controversy of Rainbow Mika's ass shot being removed, it was because Capcom wanted to profit off the TV broadcast for esports, the shittiest of all sports. So, thanks. Yeah, it doesn't affect gameplay, but I don't play fighting games. I just jerk off to their characters. Do kids watch this? Disney, can't you play something good at this hour like Milo Murphy's Law? I kid you not, some nights it was like two or three hours straight of tournaments or people discussing tournaments and sometimes it was whatever this was that I recorded. I'm watching Disney XD and it's just on this screen for freaking 30 minutes. Is, is this like a game? What's going on? It's just these octagons on the screen and occasionally something pops up. There's nothing. It's just narration. This is boring. What is this? It was some League of Legends crap I don't care about. All I do care about is my tank girl rip off Jinx. Yeah, she's hot. I want Jinx to wrap her pigtails around my neck until I'm released from this mortal coil. Put her in a good game, please. Something along the lines of Sunset Overdrive. On the bright side, introducing esports to a new generation is probably monumental or something. I don't care. DXP's a waste. Don't ever message me unless Anarchy Reigns becomes an esport. Also, don't message me unless you want to make a spiritual sequel using my characters. Please, I need this to happen. <laughs> Entertaining. DXP feels like a cheap attempt to cash in on the gaming crowd. It has almost nothing to offer you can't already find online. Who's he getting 
into it. I guess it's cool if your mommy doesn't let you use the internet and that's it. Me as a grown man has no need for this children's television block. While DXP offers more production value than the average web show, the content feels too watered down. Maybe it's for the best gaming sticks to the freedom internet has to offer. Smash Bros is gonna be sweet! <laughs> I heard you can play as Peter Pan! DXP was solely intended to be a summer block and thus most of the shows have vanished. Disney should instead do what it does best to get the gamer crowd. Take their next Hannah Montana or whatever singer and make them into a nerdcore rapper. It'll be fucking awful, so you know it'll be a hit with the kids. Don't give up. Challenge again. So, I got this weird little game called Mr. Mosquito for the PS2. You play a mosquito living in a house with three people. Your job is to suck their blood, of course. It's so itchy. Be careful when they get angry. They're a lot bigger than you are. You pissed, you pissed, you pissed. Read this one. You'll beat it in two hours. Toonami gives Mr. Mosquito for the PS2 6 out of 10. Please enjoy your summer of blood sucking. Buzz, buzz.